Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the 2024 BMW M4 Competition Convertible. Huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing the sports car for me today. Definitely take a look at their website. That link is down in the description. This M4 is finished off in Alpine white. Its MSRP is just over $107,000. And this is powered by the three liter twin power turbo inline six. It's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission pumping out 503 horsepower, 479 pound-feet of torque. That power is sent through the X-Drive all-wheel drive system, propelling this 4,300 pound convertible from zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. It has a top speed of 174 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 15.6 gallons. You'll expect to see around 16 miles per gallon in the city, 23 out on the highway. This also has a wheelbase of 112 and a half inches. Its overall length is 189.1. It has a width of 74.3 and a height of 54.3 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this M4 competition, let's start off with the massive kidney grille, which is a bit controversial, but I think on the M cars, it works very nicely, especially with the lines that go into the hood there. But this has a forward facing camera, M4 comp badge on one side, and plenty of cutouts to provide a lot of cooling to that engine. There's also parking sensors and then more of the honeycomb design for the lower mesh to provide even more cooling. Now this also has a set of LED headlights, DRLs and turn signals with the laser light technology. You will notice the blue accents which indicate that. And there's also some gloss black trim accents on both corners along with some more inlets. And then the rest of the lines on the hood which give it a very sinister front end design. I love all the contoured lines, especially with that grill, gives it a really nice look. Now this M4 also has a staggered setup for the wheels. They're 19 by nine and a half up front, 20 by 10 and a half in the rear with the M Sport brake calipers finished off in blue. This has six pistons up front with single pistons in the rear. And there's even some carbon fiber goodies for this particular model. You'll notice the M4 comp badge and the trim piece up top along with M Performance. And then the entire lower side skirt is finished in carbon fiber. Check out the side blade for this upper section. It gives it a really nice look. And this even has carbon fiber for the power folding side mirrors. There's a camera and a turn signal. And being the convertible, the soft top is down at the moment. So this is how it looks with the top down. Now, if we hold on the lock button, I'm not sure. Yep, you can actually put the top back up. So I'm continuing to hold on that button and we can take another look at the top operation. Pretty neat to be able to do that with the key fob itself. And then as we work our way into the rear, we have the LED taillights along with the third brake light, backup camera in the BMW logo there, along with all the sensors, gloss black in the lower diffuser, and then there's also carbon fiber for this M Sport quad tip dual exhaust. And we can take a listen to that because this does have remote start. So triple tap that lock button and we'll bring it to life. And when you triple tap on it, you can shut this off. You can use the button on the key fob or the one up underneath to gain access to the trunk space now. With the convertible still down, this is the amount of space that you get and you can actually fold down the back seat as well. So there's a tab right here, pull on that and you can place in some more items if you need to. With the top up as well, you can also push this forwards so that way you have a little bit more height for your rear cargo. So it's actually pretty practical with the top up or down. It still gives you a storage to place in items that you need to, which is nice. And now as we work our way to the interior, the vehicle is locked at the moment. We have the smart key, so that will unlock. And check out this dark brown Tardufo interior. We have all of that leather, all the brushed aluminum accents, Harman Kardon for the sound system. There's actually four windows for this model. So there are windows for the back, which I'll show here soon. And then we have memory seating adjustments, a little bit of storage, and the trunk will release. And then very beautiful for the front seats. This does have heaters in the headrest, M4 badge as well. And then all the uh, automatic adjustments down below, minus the one manual adjustment for that leg support. But let's work our way to these back seats now, where if you pull the backrest and push it forwards, the seat is going to slowly work its way forwards, allowing me to hop into the back. Now, obviously with the top down, it's very easy to get into the back. You have a little bit of leg room. You will have to adjust those seats accordingly. There's climates along with temperatures and then two cup holders right in the middle. You have a little bit of storage underneath the armrest 
and you can actually gain access to the back. We have a wind deflector in here at the moment, but if you remove that, that goes all the way through to the trunk space there, which is nice. And then with the top up, even with the hat on, I have about a quarter inch or so above my head. Honestly, I can sit up at five foot 10. I could ride around in the back and with this window down, have a nice comfortable armrest. So it is practical to have adults in the back seat. You probably won't be using it that often, but if you needed to, they are large enough to do that. And then with all four windows down, you get another look. You can get that cross breeze going and have the top up, which is really neat to see. Now with this steering wheel, we have the M Sport steering wheel, which is solid leather and badge. It's heated too. And then there's a lot of carbon fiber accents as well as the colors that are stitched within it. Now on this left side, there's M1 along with your cruise control settings. Right side, there's M2. There's also your volume, tuning, Bluetooth and voice commands and then the carbon fiber paddle shifters behind that. But let's start this up and get some rev clips for this M4. And coming back to the digital gauge cluster, on the left side, there's miles per hour and the fuel level. Right side, there's the tack along with what gear you're in and your engine temperature. And then right in the middle, if you use this middle button on the right side of the steering wheel, you can actually pull up a lot of content. So you can scroll through all of these vitals, just depending on what you'd like to see, live readouts for your horsepower and torque. You can pull up your media as well. And then you can scroll over to the head up display. So currently it's showing the standard view, which is just miles per hour and the speed limit. You can pull up directional, which pulls up the compass. And then you have standard as well, which is the same as reduced. Now you can also change the layout here just by pushing M mode down below. So when you push on that, that will activate road, sport or track. And when you put it into uh, sport mode, it changes where now you have the tack on one side, some vitals, what gear you're in is front and center. It will also pull up with the RPM gauge for your head up display. So really cool if you're doing some more sporty driving. Track mode is just going to shut off the entire infotainment system. Now on this left side, there's all the headlight adjustments along with a small storage bin. And then as we work our way back to the infotainment system, you have a lot that you can go through. So when you pull up all of these icons here, you do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You can get into your navigation, your interior lighting. You have a lot that you can configure as needed. If you go back to home, you have a lot more that you can scroll through and you can adjust this how you'd like to and even add some information depending on what you would like to see. So it's nice that you have that much at your fingertips here. It's very quick to go through. There's also shortcuts to your navigation as well as your phone, music, and you can get back into those apps. Now in the lower section, this is the shortcut to get into the heated and ventilated seats, as well as your temperatures, your fan speed, all of that information you can quickly get to since that is fixed in the lower section. Now there's more carbon fiber for this interior, two air vents right in the middle, along with power and volume tuning. And then underneath the carbon fiber lid, there's wireless charging with auxiliaries and cup holders. And then you can close that to give it a very nice seamless look. Over on this right side, these are a bunch of shortcuts for the infotainment system. So you don't have to use it as a touchscreen system as you can go through it with all of those controls. And then looking at the shifter, let's put it into reverse where we have the 360 camera system with all of the guidelines and all of the different angles so you can see around the entire vehicle. There's also another top-down view that you can get into. And then when you put this vehicle into drive, you can also bump it over one more time, which allows you to use the paddles, or you can actually shift using the shifter itself. And then on the back side, there's park, and you can actually adjust how quick or slow you want the transmission to feel. There's traction control, another shortcut to the camera system, which will also pull up the forward-facing camera. There's the parking sensors, engine start-stop, and then there's also a setup button, when you push on that, you can get into your configurators for M1 and M2. So that way you can go through all this information and go from efficiency to sport or sport plus, depending on how you want to drive for the day. There's the exhaust note button along with auto hold and the e-brake. And then the heated headrest controls are on both sides and the top operation is right in the middle. And then for the center armrest, you get an auxiliary with a little bit of space. And then the glove box, of course, has a little bit more space. And then up top, there is a call button and we have a very nice headliner. You wouldn't even think that this is a convertible with the uh, style headliner that it has. 
Now there is a little bit of a pillar right there, but you can easily see out of both windows there. And then over your left shoulder, you really don't have any blind spots. As we set up now behind the wheel for the M4 competition, this is always a fun BMW sports car to drive. And you can actually get two transmissions for this as well. If you go with the base M4, what I'll call it, the non-competition, you can go with a six-speed manual. In the competition, you only get the eight-speed. So just depending on which uh, transmission option is going to work best for you, you do have a few different options to go with. I personally would go with the manual, but it is so fun to row through the gears in this automatic. It is so quick, especially when you have that setting all the way up. And this just has the power when you want it. There is nothing not performance about this M4. This is a vehicle that you can even put this into two wheel drive. So going into the drift analyzer, you can drift with your M4, put it into two wheel drive. We're currently in four wheel drive sport. You do have to have all the traction control aids off in order to do a two wheel drive. But that just gives you a lot more versatility, especially if you want to do some tail happy driving with this car. But you can also just tone it back as well. And what I also love about this automatic too is that it will adjust the shifts whether you're using the paddles or it's just in the normal shifting by itself. So in, let's go back to the quickest shifts. Hopefully you can hear that downshifted twice. And then it will rev a little bit higher in the quicker shifts. And then when you're ready to, you can just put it back to normal daily driving settings. So I love the configurability and the driving dynamics that this M4 gives you. It just makes it that much more fun so you can put it to the setting of the driving conditions that you're doing for the day. And as far as driving the convertible, it's very nice. I love how the top here doesn't look like a convertible. You can see one line here, but it sounds like you're in a coupe. Very well refined, no road noise, wind noise. It's what you'd expect from a BMW even with the top. So I really like that aspect. If you want to go with the convertible, you're not going to sacrifice for some, you know, raggedy soft top. This is a well insulated soft top for this. Just a mild acceleration too. This is so quick. This is a vehicle that I have been considering at some point in the future. When the time comes when I have kids and I need practicality to throw a car seat in the back, I can't see another option other than the M4, just because it's still going to give me the performance that I want from a sports car, but then I can throw additional people in the car too. And it's still in a Sport Plus second gear, here we go. Just like that, we're up to speed, brakes do a great job, and the handling of this car is amazing. Super solid, direct steering. This is a car that you can just rip on and really have some fun. I would be excited to put the full potential of this car to the test and really see what else it can do. But this is what it's like to be behind the wheel for the M4 competition. Hopefully you can hear how quickly this is downshifting by itself. <laughs> this is a sweet car. I love the seating position. I love how it drives too. And when you're ready to, we can put it back into efficient and exhaust will tone down. Steering will tone down. We have the chassis, brakes, engine it all just gets a little bit less tame. And we have a lot of nice materials for this specific option. So you can spec this with so many different options just depending on your budget. You don't have to spend six figures on an M4. If you want a little bit more of a basic one or you want the manual transmission, you don't have to spend six figures. Again, just depending on options that you would like to add. So there's a huge uh, pricing in the M4. You can also go with the M2 if you'd like. It's a little bit smaller of a vehicle, but it still weighs almost the same as the M4 now. It used to be a lot less uh, in weight compared to the M4, but the M2 is an option, a little bit smaller of the uh, interior space, so the back seats will be smaller as well. So it just depends on 
Which one you'd like to get? Automatic and manual are available in the M2. And we have several videos on the M2 if you'd like to check those out as well. But the M4, definitely a great option. The ultimate dad sports car. I'm sure the kids would have a lot of fun in the back. Well, let's give it one more acceleration for today's video. <laughs> and that's going to wrap it up. Once again, huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing this M4 for me today. Take a look at their website. That link is down in the description. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.